What's going on YouTube? It's me Jeffrey again. Today we are reacting to another video and this time we are reacting to The Stories of Sodor Season 5 You know, an episode known as Vandalism up which is uploaded by the one and only Victor Tanzig. Now, um, I've watched uh, Most of his episodes, but I haven't reacted to them So this is more like the first episode of Victor Tanzig's videos that I'm gonna react to so I thought, why not start off with the newest one that just came out today? So, yeah. Season 5, Episode 1, Vandalism. So, let's get to it. 3, 2, 1, clicky click. We are on track, literally. Okay, so we are ourselves the intro. The train, for its type, is the most like powerful how vehicle the on land. A reference to tugs. And the engines of Sodor are the power I mean, behind the docks, industries, I mean, and branch lines that make up the world-renowned I mean, Northwestern Railway. By, so, yeah. These are the stories of Sodor. Here we go, stories of Sodor. Based on a railway series by Reverend W. Audrey. And the Tugs television series by David Min and Robert D. Cardona. Hope I didn't butcher that. Themed by Junior Campbell and Michael Donnell. Vandalism. Directed, written, and told by Victor Tanzig. Here we go. By 1965, the Little Western had been open for several months and was doing well. Aside from solid freight and passenger traffic, the line did a roaring trade in oil deliveries. From the storage site at Waterton, tankers were brought to Tidmouth before being transferred to the mainland. Unfortunately, this prosperity was marred by a rise in vandalism. Indeed, the entire island had experienced a spike in hooliganism thanks to a police strike, one that dragged on as negotiations with the council repeatedly failed. The entire force vandalism. hadn't walked off the job, but it was operating at a severely like reduced capacity. This gave the vandals free reign to break and smash things, and I'm sorry <sighs> really? to say, the railway was one of their favorite targets. Remember what Duke said? Vandals like to break and, and then smash things. you wake up when things. it happened? Yes, I did, but I told them to keep going. What do you think? Right, that was a stupid question. How'd they get in here? And how'd they get up there? Sometimes I really yeah, admire their determination. There? I said sometimes. Did you call the police? We did, and a single copper showed up. He was here about ten minutes and left, saying, We'll do what we can with our limited resources. Ugh, <sighs> bloody hoodlums. None of this would have happened if the council just gave the police what they want. That's a terrible idea, Toad. If you're too accommodating, you give them all the power. Based Wendell's on what you've told point. us about occupied Europe, living in a police state sounds terrible. Come on, Wendell. We're a long way from that, are we? Regardless, I think we can all agree if the police don't come back soon, Things will only get worse. More graffitis. Hey, why are you stopping, bro? A pipe? What did you do? My driver pushed it aside. We tried to call the police at Callan, but got no answer. They were probably at Napford. Those bloody hoodlums smashed up some of the coaches and tagged my tender. What'd they write? Something that reminded me I'm a war criminal. When the coppers had a look, I heard one of them say, Sounds about right. That's pretty wow. poor form, but understandable. You can't Imagine have much sympathy for war a crook, and I don't deserve it anyway. Sorry, I didn't II, mean to I mean, whine. Uh, Is my train ready? Yes, that's it on track through. two. Alright, thanks. Well, looks like I'm gonna have to blur that out. I'm gonna have to blur that that tattoo on Peter's tender out. If you wanna see the what it says, just watch the original video that Victor made. Bloody hoodlums! More like bloody points. They were jammed. 
Are you serious? I thought you lot fixed them. Be fair, Donald, it was before my time, and it's a sad fact anything mechanical will break down eventually. I suppose yeah, Derek, it's still stop annoying. Point. The funny thing is, I was due to come in next week for an overhaul. Then we might as well kill two birds with one stone. Oh, Wait, sorry, what? Rob, didn't see you there. Kill two How birds with one stone. What Very well, say, thank dude? you. I can tell I'm going to love it here. Excellent. Donald, allow me to introduce the what new superintendent of Croven's Gate, Mr. Robert Hall. Nice to meet oh, you, Mr. Robert Hall. Hall. Please, call me Rob. And we have actually met before. We have? I'm sorry, I don't recognize you. I didn't think you would. I was about eight years old when you last saw me. My brother and I watched you go by with the goods train. Our father was the guard. Is that so? so apparently that guy his knows name? Great one of the Scott. Scott twins. Seriously? No, no, I just know it's the time. I have a meeting with Sir Topham soon. I have to leave or I'll be late. Good luck. Thanks, Derek. Nice seeing you again, Donald. You too. Yeah, I'm I Donald. suppose. Hall. 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 Ring any bells? Not really. I've known several blokes by that name over the years. Maybe they all had the same father. Some of them, it wouldn't surprise me. What can you tell me about this one? Career railway engineer who's worked all over the country. He's helped design several of BR's more successful locomotives, both steam and diesel. He's also said to be a whiz when it comes to repairs and overhauls. Why'd you wish him luck? Because I know why he's going to see Sir Topham. He has this special project he wants to get off the ground. What's I can't say project, any more, though? but it sounds amazing. Well, if that's true, I'm sure Sir Topham will be interested. Indeed he would be, as would the rest of us when we learned about it. But that is a story for another day. However, Robert almost didn't make his meeting because hoodlums let a flock of sheep out of their paddock. Aye. Yes, I'm afraid the vandalism continued as the strike dragged now on. The hoodlums as are feared, each act became more destructive to the and disruptive. And roads, as well as running graffiti on the walls. <laughs> Typical vandals. All right, either these bloody hoodlums are ghosts, or we're just heavy sleepers. They're Either not ghosts, way, it's James. damn annoying. How long until it's fixed, Derek? Maybe an hour? But I have to take the kipper in 15 minutes. Sorry, Henry, we can't work any the faster. Bother! Don't worry, Henry, I can uh, take the Jeffrey, kipper for you. The you can? Well, I'm literally the only me. one who can leave the shed, name, so why not? Hey, why it, not? Okay. Thanks, I Jeffrey, it. I owe you one. Not at all. This is rather exciting. I can't remember the last time I took the flying kipper. Have you ever? I don't know. Assuming I the haven't, do you have any Thomas advice OC for me? That has Be on time and don't crash into anything. The best advice one can give an engine. Yes, yes quite. quite. Now Jeffrey's gonna pull the flying kipper. Okay, why is Henry's theme playing while Jeffrey the Red Engine is pulling the flying kipper? Why? Oh right, because it's the flying kipper, that's why. I have to say, Victor did a really good job with the scenery views like that. Very impressive right there, how you do all that in Train Simulator. Very impressive, to be honest. He sure looks tough. that bend. Uh-oh. The pipe. Oh, no. Jesus Christ! Oh, my God. Jesus. That's, uh... Well, that's just gruesome right there. That's a gruesome crash. And you're just standing there, oh dude? Oh, there's Mickey. I see Derek is helping Mickey with this mess. Tell this is not good. Tell the music's not a good sight. Wait. I 
I think he's dead. They should have just moved that pipe before he just passed by. It would have made the whole accident preventable. Yeah, that sounds tells like it's not good news. Was there no hope, Derek? No. According to Mr. Hall, Jeffrey and his crew were likely killed on impact. Oh, oh God. Man. It should have been me. And Jeffrey I'm was really one of my top three favorite characters so in the stories of Solar. Do you have any idea like, how it happened? Jeffrey, the yes, was like we at, like, do. Naturally, we were saddened and incensed by one, Jeffrey's death, know. and we weren't the only ones. I think, the public I think was Jeffrey fed up with the escalating situation and began pressuring the police and council to come to an agreement, which Just they did. The with the force returned to full strength, they began cracking down hard on vandalism. Many of those bloody hoodlums were arrested, including the ones who attempted to derail William. However, they swore blind they had nothing to do with what happened to Jeffrey. Of course, nobody believed them, but as would be revealed, they were telling the truth truth, and I'm sorry to say, the real culprit was only just getting started. Oh. Who's the real culprit? <sighs> wow. And the episode just ends like that? That was... That was a sad episode. We literally just lost a Thomas character that shared my o my character name or my real name, just first name wise. But yeah, rest in peace to Jeffrey the Red Engine. He clearly did not deserve that. Like, um, okay, so that was the stories of Sodor, uh, season five, episode one, uh, known as Vandalism, and um. I just want to give off a like a little bit of a analysis on this. Um, here's what I thought of the the episode itself. Um, it even though it was a little shorter than all the episodes that Victor has made in the past. Um, I think this episode kind of like is a way to tell of that there is still some threats going on on Sodor, like with hoodlums and stuff like that. But um. I did not expect to see that whatever, whatever we just saw on Peter's tender get painted on him, like as some kind of reminder for what Peter did while engines fought in World War II. Um, I, I didn't expect to see that. So uh, the other thing that, you know, it, I was just shocked to see Jeffrey, the red engine, just freaking derail from a rusted pipe that was on the tracks and it just caused him to roll down that hill like that and it was like um you might wonder how did he like die from something like that well um do you remember in that a previous episode from the story of Sodor by the name of Ghost where um there was a story right of the first Arthur engine that was named Arthur and he was you know, he was not, he had the same basis as the Arthur in the show, but he was basically a rough rider and he, he was going down the Gordon's Hill and he derailed and it was at very fast velocity. So it's safe to assume that Jeffrey the Red Engine had, coincidentally had the same fate as the Arthur engine in, uh, from that episode, except it was caused by a pipe and not, you know, rough riding. So, um, yeah, rest in peace to Jeffrey Red Engine right there. Um, and the final thing I'd like to say about this, you know, episode that Victor's made is that, um, I actually really enjoy the, some of the scenery scenarios that he, sh you know, some of the scenery shots that he makes in some of these episodes, like how you saw with Jeffrey was pulling the flying kipper. I honestly thought those shots were really cool, like, I don't know why, but I just really love those, like, cinematic shots where it's, like, a character at very, very, very far distance. And it's like, God, does that look good. And anyways, that's, this is my, that was my reaction to the stories of Sodor. 
season five, episode one, vandalism. So like, comment, share, subscribe. Uh, if you want to watch the episode yourself, just I'll send a link to the original video in description. Uh, shout out goes to Victor Tanzig for making this episode. And uh, yeah, this is Jeffrey Samberski signing out.